What's up, everybody? Welcome to Super Retro, a nostalgic podcast about retro gaming, movies and film, pop culture, music, anything dope from the 80s and 90s. I'm your host, Tuck. That's your host, Will. Happy to be with y'all. Jam-packed show as always. Let's get right into it, Will. What up? Back again. Back again. Hey, hey, what y'all need to do right now is go to our page, either one of them, but probably the Instagram page in this in this uh, regard, Yeah. and look at the NBA Jam video that we posted. Uh, it's easily the best video we've ever had posted on Instagram. It's doing like TikTok numbers over yeah. on Instagram. and uh, But that's besides the point. The reason I'm telling you about it is Will can never go to Detroit again. No. Don't I'm, even try it, bro. I'm banned. Will, in the video, calls the Pistons trash. And he was actually referring to the time frame. Um, yeah, like right after Jordan. Yeah. yeah. And, and w- when the Bulls beat him. You know, the, the Bulls, I mean, the Pistons ended up being trash, and, and Will mentioned it. They had a it, trash period yeah, after that. Yeah. And, but, like, uh, uh, you know how people get, man. It's all, Everybody I saw on there that said that were Detroit people. Oh, yeah. Uh, Pistons, no one else had a problem. Pistons fans are coming for Will's head. But, yeah, most people agreed with the whole video in yeah. general. Uh, but, yeah, it's hilarious. Some, there's and, a, and doing it while wearing a Buffalo Bills shirt. Yeah, the, the combination. They were coming after me. Yeah, he had that Bills shirt on. They were, they were, every single person let Will know that the Bills went zero. They were like, uh, how those four Super Bowl losses yeah. feel? I was like, not good. <laughs> yeah, bro, I'm sorry. Um, the, but uh, every team, I like to say this: every team in the world has trash periods. Absolutely. And if you can't admit that, something's wrong with you. Yeah. Like the Bills are not trash right now, but they have been trash for decades. <laughs> right. So right. I get it. Yeah. The, and if someone uh, said the Bills are trash, I'd be like, well, we have been. Yeah, it, but not currently, yeah, but have But it. currently, the Pistons are trash, so go fuck yourself. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my favorite one was uh, was uh, a um, a news anchor I know. guy that I saw it. C- came for Will's head. He said the same thing. But, dude, I, Super I'm super uh, surprised by how many people liked our video. Oh, yeah. Like, it was a while for a while. Yeah. Kevin Garnett. Bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kevin. Sh- hey. Basically, uh, Ke- Kevin Garnett liked our video uh, about NBA Jam. So um, where do we send a shirt to that guy? Yeah. So basically, we're best friends now. You know, he's KG, gonna, bro. He'll be at the next tournament. You know, KG. No, yeah, a bunch of bunch of people. I was surprised like the video. So that was yeah, cool. Yeah, that's so. neat, man. All right, man. So let's get first, right into it. First yeah. topic. Yeah, we got more topics this time than we do. Than we did the last one. We yeah. only had a few last time, but we flip our board around. There's more yeah, on that side. We got the Dead Sea Scrolls over here. Hell yeah! So all right, man, we're gonna start a new segment where we showcase a year, and this year I'll and, and talk about how what came out that year, w- the pop culture influence that that certain year had. So without any further ado, let's talk about 1991, y'all. Where and, were you? Yeah, what were you doing in 1991? Were you alive? Yeah, yeah. most people probably were. Yeah, but you might have been. And if you weren't, listen to all this dope shit that happened in 1991. This is the most significant for me. And, and as far as our show is concerned, if, if, if this isn't the most significant, it's one of the most significant things that happened in 1991. Nintendo released... The Super Nintendo to Man. the American market, y'all. Man, that shit was went wild. crazy. Shit was wild. That's when, that's when the gaming took the next step. Yeah. That's when the sports games, like, turned into something else. You and know. That's when I, I, as a as a video gamer, my Nintendo, my Nintendo Entertainment System got put to a side. Yeah. I was like, fuck that thing. Like, I'm not one of these people who would. All the games that came after, mm-hmm. like on NES, yep. I did not play them. That's right. That's why sometimes we run into that. Don't have a clue. You, never have any rememberings of it. Like yep. uh, Also released with the Super Nintendo that year was Super Mario World, often regarded by a lot of people as the best in the whole am- Mario series. A lot of people love it. I love it too. And then, of course... This is a banger. Uh, iconic game right here. And we haven't covered this one individually yet. Yeah, and I don't know what we're waiting for. I feel like there's a reason we're waiting because we want to do it justice. Yeah. The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past was released in 1991. I would say that that's probably the best game ever on, this, on I feel, SNES. I feel like that game is the game that they were trying to make when they made the first Zelda game. Or the second. Or the second. Yeah. Yeah, either one. The when second they, they tried to do something. When they when they had 
when they had the uh, the idea for Zelda. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is I think this is what they meant. Like it's probably the first awesome RPG. Battletoads on the NES. Yep. And often regarded as if not the but one of the hardest games on the NES and I'll tell you what that 1991 for for the NES is when the games really started to look amazing. Yep. Uh, and, and a lot of times you didn't know if this was a Super Nintendo game or an NES game. And Battletoads was definitely one of those. You play the game today, it's a beautiful game. It looks amazing. And it's only an 8-bit game. It's hard to believe. Yep. Bart vs. the Space Mutants on the NES dropped. Another hard-ass game. But for me, definitely in my top 20 nostalgic games of all time. If not my top 10, I love that game. Even though it's so fucking hard. Definitely have never made it past the first level. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, The Manhattan Project on the NES. Another game that looked amazing. Yep. And uh, was the last in the Turtles series on, oh, the yes. Ninten- on the NES. But was followed the same exact year by Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, on the Super Nintendo. Which, so they were still making games for both. Yeah, they were they were double dipping. Like, they but, were. But Turtles in Time, man, to me, I don't think you could get much better at that era than I, that man i don't think so either i think it was the culmination of all the turtles it games was, leading up to turtles in time i was just playing it the other day so good bro. i played it for like an hour a couple days ago and wow it holds up how crazy that's a i found my my child my copy and i brought it over here and then of the course OG. we have to mention we haven't mentioned the sega genesis at all it came out before 1991 but they introduced their most iconic character, Sonic Man, the Hedgehog. That shit was... It was where you went and played your buddies or whoever had one or yeah. you got one. When you played that, you felt like Sega had arrived. Dude, I have so much... I, I think for Sonic the Hedgehog and the music in Sonic the Hedgehog and the actual Sega Genesis system, I think I have equal nostalgia for those things. For for the for the Sega Genesis and Sonic the Hedgehog, yeah. as I do to as I do with the NES and like say Super Mario, yeah, I really do because I, I remember there was a very specific time when I got all of it at the same time. Me too. That music to me, the sounds, the sound of Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, I don't know. It's hard to beat. It was getting it. coins, like I, it's hard to beat. It was it. such a different style. Like when they like the fastness of it. Mm-hmm. It oh, was yeah. so fun. The t- t- like it changed the way you like used to be like Mario jump, jump, slow, slow. Yeah, it was fast. Like as you that. were in it, bro. Like yeah. Sonic really to me uh made me a fan of Sega Genesis. Me too. Me too. All right. So yeah, those are that's video games in nineteen ninety one. So let's move right along to music from nineteen ninety one. This this right is here wild. is unbelievable. Even though all of the games we just mentioned for nineteen ninety one are also unbelievable. Which were unbelievable. This is even more unbelievable, probably. <laughs> the music that was released in 1991. Just like. Unfucking real. Like classic albums, bro. Classic albums. We're going to touch on a couple. Even today. Yeah. Yes. You, you, you got to start with Nirvana's Nevermind. Okay. That is one of the most important albums of all time. Yeah. It really is. As far as alternative is concerned, as, as far as rock music is concerned. It, and just it, the, uh, the, the look of it, like the whole promote, everything about it. Yeah. It is timeless. It the is album still cover. amazing album today. Uh, and then released on the same day, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Blood Sugar Sex How, Magic. Bro? Like how? Who would have known in that moment that those two albums would be getting played decades later? Can you imagine going to like um, Fye or Sam Goody, wherever, and, wherever you got your music, and you buy, you're, you just look and they're both on the rack, and you're like, let me get the Nirvana, and let me get the who, the Red, Red Hot, Hot Chili, Chili Peppers. All right, yeah, I heard of them. Let's see how, it, and then let's see dang, how these two play out. I'd love to be there listening to both of those side by side, like get listening, which were parties. very different. Yeah. Which were very different. No way anyone could have known how big of an impact those two bands would have. I know. And a I know. run that they're, I mean, they're still going. And, and, and music from both of those is still all over the radio today. Yes, I'm saying. They're yeah. still going. Yeah. Uh, so, and then, he, he, so, all right, set those aside. Yeah. Metallica, self titled album, other known as the Black Album. Okay. I mean, just bangers, bro. 
people argue all day long about Metallica's best work, but I'll tell you what, Inner Sandman on the Black Album, if you go online and Google Inner Sandman Live and watch them perform it in Russia or the Soviet Union, wherever the hell they're at, there's yeah. like a million people yeah, there. it's too many people. Bro, it is the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen I remember in my when you showed, you showed your son. You're <laughs> like, watch this. I go back and watch it like once uh, every few months just to remind myself of that the shit actually happened. Yeah, that's what got me that out. Uh, since I'm with the era I'm in, that's what got me into Metallica. That, 100%. Um, I mean, they had some classic shit in the 80s. Yeah, but Don't get it wrong. Yeah. This may have been their last real, like, this may have been the last real one, you know, yeah. like you couldn't top this. And no, that that, like, that was their peak. Whereas this is good as you can get. Yeah. Um, and then I, I, LL Cool J, Mama Said Knock Bro. You Out. I feel like that was important to the early 90s in uh, 1991. If LL Cool J was coming out like that, you knew. Bro. You knew hip hop was about to take a turn. I mean, as say who I am, uh, I listened to that more than I did any of those. Oh, and, for sure. In, in that era. Yeah, at like, that time. I was banging that LL Cool J on tape. I love that shit. I yeah, remember like, the video. I used to play, I used to rewind, play, rewind, yep. play. Mama said, knock you out constantly, oh, yeah. bro. Such, man, I love that whole album Me and too. the thing. And at the time, that shit just was all over MTV. Bro. That he, was it. He LL owned cool MTV. J, yeah, he was killing the game. Uh, and he's still killing the game, you know. Now he's, he's an actor. Yeah. People don't even know he did music. I know. I know. That's crazy. Um, oh, Guns N' Roses, Use Your Illusions 1 and 2, two more iconic albums yep. released by one of the biggest bands from the 80s and the early 90s. I mean, when you think of the 80s and early 90s, you have to talk about Guns N' Roses, Axl Rose, Slash. Those hair bands, man. You know, November Rain, all Bro, that shit. You like know. That, that, that genre sort of didn't last, but I they know. are still good. Yeah. They'll still get used for everything, movies, shows, fucking, the, and like... They're on radio still. Yeah, I look back at that at that time, the hair band era, uh, and I'm glad that it happened. Bro. But, but I was for sure. And then you know the the Nirvana on the list is probably single handedly responsible for ending that era. No, no, that, that all that type yeah. of shit. Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nirvana, that changed yeah. all the Seattle music that yep. came out at the time. Alice in Chains, Grunge and all that. came out and yeah. it ended it. Yeah, and then people were like, "Whoa, wait but a minute!" But what's fucked up crap. is they both live on. Oh, for sure. They Grunge, have their hair band. Now it's all different shit. Yeah, they they have a nice spot in pop culture. Hundred percent. Um, MC Hammer, I'm too in. legit to quit. You want you want to do me a favor after you're done with this, go to YouTube and watch Too Legit to Quit the video, bro. bro he he couldn't. You couldn't have been bigger. It was like a 15 minute intro, and you and and it it works with our show so well. All of the people, he's got all these celebrities at the time mm -hmm. talking about him like MC Hammer's missing. Oh, he quit. He retired. All these people talking to the camera. You got like Bud Bundy. Yeah. You got all these people at the time that were relevant. It's hilarious. Dude, dude. he I, honestly, dude, you couldn't. None of those people up there could have been as big as him. I, he was in massive. that era. He was massive. Like bro. you couldn't say MC Hammer without I mean, you couldn't go a day without hearing it. No, nah, no. Nah. Big time. Shout out to MC Hammer. All right, y'all. So movies in 1991. Terminator 2. Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know what? A bunch. You, Arnold Schwarzenegger was huge in the 80s and I mean, 90s. He, he, to me, I think I don't think you could get bigger as an action star. Nah, he was the biggest action star for sure. Yeah. Uh, as far as in the mainstream. But you know who my biggest action star was? Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah, but I'd say... Uh, I'd say he was probably the biggest action star ever. Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger. Yeah, he's probably, you know, uh, The Rock pretty much is that now, is but that still now. not even close. Not bro. even that. Nah, not even that. Bro. Um, it's just because his, his appeal, man, he his was, his accent. He, and the shit he did. Predator and all the, like. Terminator. He, killed, Predator. he was a monster. Yeah. Um, all right, Silence of the Lambs. Such a good movie, dude. Iconic. Uh, I guess horror film you would classify that as. It's some, some serious, dark creepy shit. shit. Anthony Hopkins, man, he killed that shit. He did. That's a wild movie. Uh, oh, Boys in the Hood. Mm. Love this shit right Classic here. Classic movie. Dude. Written by John Singleton. Speaking of John Singleton, he, he convinced Ice Cube to act in this movie. and He's still an actor. It was his debut movie, 
that he acted in, and this kicked off Ice Cube's film career yeah. and him writing stuff. Ice yeah. Cube was like, ah, fuck music. Yeah, he's like, you know what? <laughs> this is all right. I'm a pretty good writer. Yeah, this is all right. I write. He he was basically writing movies in his songs yeah, anyway. Hundred percent. So he just for NWA yep. and and his solo and stuff. and his videos. So he just was like, all right. So yeah, John Singleton kicked that off for Ice Cube. I mean, Boys in the Hood's a classic film. Wes Craven's People Under the Stairs. Bro, that was a fucked up movie, dude. That's a scary ass movie. It's really weird. Didn't we? No, we talked about children. On the yeah, board. no, we uh, haven't talked about. When I saw that, I was like, bro, oh my God, I forgot about People Under the Stairs. We probably need to do a segment yeah, on that. But what a freaky movie. Man, Wes If you haven't Craven, seen that, go watch that. That's a scary ass movie. Yeah. <laughs> you will not want to go in your basement. No. Nah. Um, Ernest Scared Stupid. Shout mm. out to the homie of the show, Jim Varney. Our. our our OG. Our OG, like R.I.P. Jim Varney. Yeah. Uh, Ernest Scared Stupid dropped in 1991. The Adams Family. I put that on there because I felt like it was relevant. You know, it was a... Uh, Man, it's always relevant. Like, the Adams yeah. Family will be done here until the end of time. Yeah, and that one, that particular one is the one where um, uh, Winona Ryder, is mm -hmm. it? Is that who? It? No, yeah. no, no, no. It's a... Uh, Christina Ricci. Yeah. Christina Ricci plays Wednesday. They'll be doing Adams Families for decades after this hell yeah and then listen to the television shows that debuted in 1991 nickelodeon had three of them that live on forever in pop culture nickelodeon was killing back then yeah hey nickelodeon had the 90s on they lock. really did bro disney disney was secondary no to me yeah to to nickelodeon for me to yeah, nickelodeon for sure uh, but yeah, debuting in 1991, the Ren and Stimpy show, the groundbreaking, cutting edge, shock value, crazy ass cartoon that somehow aired on Nickelodeon. It was wild, but we're going to cover that later. Uh, Doug, the, the classic shout out. Doug, shout out shout to, to the Air Jets, shout out to the Air Jets. Um, but yeah, Doug debuted in 1991 as well as Rugrats. That yeah, was a those are all three in the same vein. Huge. Yeah, and they all, you can just tell, it just feels like Nickelodeon. So, And then, uh, oh, and oh, also. Dinosaurs. Bro. Dinosaurs. Not the mama or whatever. Oh, my it. God. Dude, I have. You got it. A uh, little jacket over here. I should show not it. Not the mama. I got to show it. And since we're on the subject. Look at boom. this. Look at this ugly motherfucker. Look at that. Look at that. Who has one of those? We do. All right. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, that debuted in 1991. Dinosaurs, not the mama. I don't mean, this next one probably, man. You, I don't think you could have a better run than they did. Yeah, Home Improvement. I mean, just... home, another. Uh, I have a lot of dads, y'all, and Tim Allen on Home Improvement. He was our dad. He was my dad for sure. Home Improvement. What a good show. Had what a run, dude. What a like, run. It was iconic. Tool Time. <laughs> I always wanted to watch Tool Time. Like a real show? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I just wanted to watch, uh, what was his name? Al or something? What? Either way, Home Improvement. And, and check this out. Also debuting in 1991. You are not the father. Mari, back in his beginning. Maury Povich show started in 1991. Went on to just be a hilarious show. Yeah, it morphed into something. Yeah, at first it was serious. And then it turned into like... like you're not the father chasing people with olives. It and got weird. Shit got weird. It was almost like Jerry Springer. You know, it's like he was competing with Jerry Springer. Yeah, you know? it got. They kept trying to one up each other. I guess. Yeah. So that was. I enjoyed yeah, it. Me too. There was nothing like you know, uh, getting out of school, watching you some more. You're staying home from school. Yeah. If you stayed home from school, you got to watch a little more. One hundred percent. Uh, and then where in the world is Carmen San Diego? I feel like that has pop culture. It significance does. you know means something to me i used to watch it all the time i don't remember what channel it came on but yeah. i watched it a lot for some reason but man hey that's 1991 i'm sure we forgot something so definitely leave us some comments man, uh what a year awesome year so maybe tell us what year you want us to do next but that's 1991 all right y'all i want to talk about the iconic year that No Limit Records CEO and founder Master P had in 1998. Bro, I'm telling you right now, one of the greatest years in hip-hop history. $56.8 million, y'all, is what Master P made in the year 1998. That's wild, bro. 
Fifty-six million dollars. Let that sink in for That's a second. That's nowadays numbers. All right, they sold just under fifteen million physical copies. It's not. That's not even a thing anymore. They sold just under fifteen million physical CDs and probably tapes. That is unfucking believable, dude. This happened just before the digital I know. age. And if it, you know, I don't know if shit would have been the same. Hell no. You know, he had a strung out will. Bro, I, I'm telling you, I would go to record stores and be like, what's, is it here? <laughs> yeah. Did y'all get it? And if you had to hook up. They would give it to us early. They give it to I you. remember specifically, we would go to Better Days uh, record store here. On Bart And Sound the Room. guy would have them. Like, say they came out on Friday. They, they came out on Tuesday. Well, yeah. Well, we would get them on, on Friday. Friday. Yep. Because he would be like, yeah, we got them in. And we'd yeah. be like. Look, it'd be a little brown box behind I, I swear, dude. I, I can remember it so vividly. Me too. He, he'd be right there. He'd be like, what y'all looking for? Y'all look? And then you'd be like, yeah, I'm looking for that new uh, No Limit. He'd be like. He'd turn around. There'd be a box sitting right there on the. We got a few left. He pull it out and be like, "Don't tell anybody." Bro, I, I bet they sold out before they even came out. Guarantee it. I, I know for a fact like, that happened multiple I times. And it's just so weird because I it was like crack to us. It really was. Like I don't know what they were doing. I don't know what Master P was doing. He just bro, he had his ear to the streets, and he he just I'm t- like they, his whole story, the 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 lore of it, like selling out of his trunk and like yep. whatever it was. The buzz hit everywhere. Yeah, and what I like about it is, it, you know, at a time when critics were so important because you couldn't really find your own music. You know, you couldn't, you, or, or you couldn't go online and like search out the music that you, you know, that you wanted to hear no, and that you, you wanted. You had to take a chance and buy an Criti- album. Critics were bashing it. Critics, they were none, so wrong. None of Masterpiece shit. None of No Limit stuff that they released never really was critically acclaimed. It was always kind of bashed by the critics. I mean, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. He no. had uh, he had the streets in a choke hole. 100%. And all of us wanted that shit. Like, it was unbelievable. It was like crack. It really was. In 1998, No Limit Records released 22 albums. That's not even... Uh, what? And Master P's album, The Last Dawn, sold 4 million records. Just, alone just to just, just that, one. that one and then six other albums of those 22 went platinum and a lot of the lesser known artists hundreds of thousands of records were sold by these people that no one had ever even heard of no. just because just because master p was put them on no they limit. rode the wave bro look just because master p put them on no limit all right and then put their picture right here the coming that right here. That's what I was just telling Tuck. Like <laughs> I, I didn't even, like I wouldn't even know who these people were, but they, I was like, well, I guess I'm getting Fiend's album. I guess I'm getting C Murder's album. Straight up. I guess I'm getting Cain and Abel's album. Straight oh, up. Oh, Young Bleed, sure. Why not? Exactly. <laughs> and then look, I mean, this right here, this right here was worth. This is all the marketing that they did. They killed it with that. This was literally the all the marketing they did. They would put. The, the pictures in here. Oh, Look, coming let's, soon. Bro. Let's see what's in here. Coming soon. Mac. Bought shell it. shot. Bought it. Loved it. Loved that shit. Uh, Does that see murder second? Fiend. There's one in every family. I bought it. <laughs> see murder. Life oh, or death. That was good, bro. Let me see. Uh, oh, Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel. I am my Had brother's couple, keeper. Couple bops, man. And then this Mercedes right here. I don't know if y'all remember this, but this Mercedes, I can't even see what the name of the album is. But. You know what I'm talking about. This album, this was in these covers. They they were coming soon for like five years. Forever. It, the shit never came out. Um, Dude, the 504 boys bought it. Oh, yeah, the 504. Look, 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 look. Look, Will, charge it to the game. Silk the Shocker, look, bro. Silk the Shocker, charge it to the game. Bought it. Let, let's see what else it has. Oh, look. Mystical, bro. Mystical, unpredictable. Bought it. Coming, look, in stores October 28th. Oh, there, look, the coming ghetto, soon. Dude. The Last Dawn, the uh, one we're yeah. talking about. Cause like, this, I bought it. Look, I got the hookup. Bought it. I love this shit. Oh, man. But, they were uh, killing it with their promotions, man. Promotion, I'm telling you, man. Like, if you, if you self made, that, he didn't need anybody. No, nah, when you, that era, man, he, he had the blueprint of how to be successful in music. 
He really did. Like he was like, "Look, we're doing it our way. We're not having no people tell us what to do." Mm-hmm. Like and it and he after a while, he could do whatever the hell he wanted. Hundred percent. Let me see. I just want to make make sure we didn't miss anything. Oh, let, let, just real quick, I'm gonna run through. I'm gonna run through the artists that released albums that year. That year in 1998, you had Young Bleed, <laughs> My Balls and My Words. Was listening to it today. For me, man, that is. He almost stands out a little bit as far as the No Limit family. I don't even know how he did what he did in that album. I don't think he did. Uh, yeah, I think he was shocked at how dope that like, album I was. Like, I think he when he came out with that, he was like, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and uh, Silk the Shocker, Charge It to the Game. You know, Silk the Shocker, if you go back and listen to it, it doesn't really hold up that well. No, but like, I think what, but I, was, I, loved it. what I was listening to today is like people always like shit on his rap style. Mm -hmm. Like I think he sort of invented that though. Yeah. Like and it was a style that you couldn't really do live. Mm -hmm. Like so it sort of sucked. Yeah. But like in a studio it worked. Yeah. Cuz he'd like talk over himself. Yeah. You know what I mean like with his rap. Yeah. yeah. But still, I mean he fit with all of them. Well, people always give him shit about being a little bit in front of the beat a Yeah, bit, oh yeah, you know? that's what I'm saying. Uh and then we said Sea Murder Life and Death. Sea Murder I, was my favorite. I got the hook up soundtrack. Fiend, there's one in every family. He was always consistently there with them. He was too. I liked his voice. Uh, Soldier Slim was good. S Soldier Slim, give it to him raw. Cain and Abel, am I my brother's keeper? Uh, Mac was Mac was one of my favorites too. Mac shell shocked you, bro. Mac, I today when I was listening, you know, me and you were listening mm -hmm. today. I went and listened to Mac. He, dude, he released a song two years ago in 2022, spitting. Uh uh Spitting. I liked Mac. I'll play it for you in a minute. Yeah, it caught I liked, me off guard. I liked Mac. Because I, I didn't even know if I could find some of these artists on Spotify. That's how, like, underground this shit felt. Mm -hmm. But they're all there. That's cool, man. Um, Snoop Dogg. But, yeah, that that's a good that's a good thing. Uh, Master P was so underground that he didn't need the help of like big time promotion or the radio mm -mm. he just he had his ear to the underground he was the underground no, he he owned the streets bro yeah master p was the underground and, and that's why people gravitated towards it they felt like oh shit this is this is shit that my mom has never heard this yeah. is shit that my uncle doesn't know this is shit my teacher doesn't know I'm telling this you, isn't on mtv it was like a word of mouth type of thing that spread across the country yeah it blew up um, and then see who else we missed. Oh yeah, and then the Snoop Dogg. The game is to be sold, not to be told. That that's when Snoop went to No Limit. Was I mean, in 1998. That's weird that they. I mean, it's crazy they signed Snoop. I know. Out of nowhere. Yeah, I heard Snoop talking about Master P. Oh, uh, nothing but Snoop. Master P gave Snoop his first real money. real money. He gave him his first real money. Yeah, hundred. Yeah. Um, he, Snoop asked for like a couple grand one time. You ever he was seen like, that? No. Yeah. He, he gave like, him way more. He gave him like fucking 20 grand. Yep. When he was just asking for like a couple grand for yep. a verse. He was like, nah, nah, here you You're go. You're Snoop. Yeah, you got to know who You're you are. You're better than everybody I just made gold yeah. albums with. That put a ton of money in yeah. the pocket. Yeah. Um, Skull Duggery, Big Ed, Magic. I mean, all those dudes. I liked Magic, Mia X, Steady Mob, and, and then of course, Mystical. Mystical. was one of the best. But yeah, who had a better 1998? Nobody. Man. As far in the music industry. Yeah, he, he, he was rivaling... Like massive record companies, Capitol Records, all, all these huge Atlantic records, all these big record companies. Then you have this dude that started this shit just out of his trunk. Out of New Orleans. Yeah. So I mean, he put fear into those big record labels. For sure. They were like, what the fuck? Like, how can he do this? So 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 you're telling me we they don't need our record company? Right. Dude, that might have been that might have been the start of the whole just like that happening and then the digital era happening. Yeah. And then now, you know, you you don't even you, yeah, you don't need a record label. Like who was more independent and more successful as an independent artist than Master P? I mean I don't think anybody. And, I don't think that's a um a bold statement. I think it's pretty It well, is, bro. And well I'll, understood. Who? Nobody. Friday the thirteenth on the NES, developed by Atlas and published by LJN, based on the iconic horror franchise. Come on, man! Friday the thirteenth, I mean, Jason you they Voorhees. Had, you, you knew they had to make a game. At the time, this was pretty ballsy, man. Like I don't know if there were any other like horror film franchises that had games. I Friday know the third, Fr or, I mean, uh, Freddy. Yeah, uh, Nightmare, on, Nightmare Elm on Elm Street. But I feel like this one. This one just hit different, yep. you know, and this one gets shit on all the time. This gets shit on, and it's historically 
uh, and it's repeatedly mentioned in the worst games of all the of all time. Nintendo Power ranked it as the sixth worst video game of all time. Hmm. I don't know if I agree with that. I mean, I didn't very, I didn't have very much experience with it because, like, I think like it's one of those games I rented. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, well, you you could be one of six counselors at Camp Crystal Lake, and the whole objective was to find Jason and uh and defeat Jason before he you know offed one of the kids, <laughs> uh, because the the kids were always around, and every time there there would be this annoying ass beep beep beep. Beep. If you played this game, you know what I'm talking about. It would drive you fucking nuts. <laughs> and you would have to look at your map, which I love this map. It gives me so much nostalgia when I look at the map. Uh, and then it would show where he's at. And he'd always be on the whole opposite side of the lake. I know. It. And you'd have you'd to be like, oh, my God, there he is. Yep. And you'd have to you'd have to haul ass to get to him. And if you didn't get to him in time, well, then, you know, it was curtains for one of the kids. But if you made it to him hard as hell. It was so hard to fight yeah. Jason. I, I never, ever beat Not Jason. Not even close when I was a kid. There's no way I beat him when I was a kid. Yeah, and, and it received just terrible reviews because of how hard it actually was yeah. and, and the poor gameplay. But like I said, for me, it's in my top 20 nostalgia video games. I mean, look at the, the cover. Everything is dope, though. Yeah, I love this cover. Let me see. And that's a pretty clean copy we got right there. Oh, that's CIB. a... CIB. Motherfucker, clean boy. And, and one more thing about this: the worst weapon of all time. Oh yeah, dude. The rock. A fucking rock. And what sucks is if the person's right there, if a good like normal distance, you would try to hit an enemy, the rock goes over their head. Yeah. So you have to like get at this weird angle to hit them with this fucking rock. Bro, and if anybody knows anything about Friday the Thirteenth, ain't, ain't no rock killing Jason Voorhees. Nah, nah. You but we it. seen this dude get fucked up in every <laughs> way imaginable. Yeah, yeah. But, I, man, there's so many things I loved about the game, though. Like, you would actually get in the lake, and you'd get on a boat, and you'd run into Jason on the water. Or you you also would cut through the woods, and there'd be, like, uh, wolves and yeah. stuff in the woods. I don't know, man. It just holds a special place in my heart. Uh, and it's definitely just because of nostalgia. But I don't I mean, hate the game. No, I, I, I know you have. Uh, like, like, I think the reason it worked is because of, like, in that era, like, Jason Voorhees held so much fear oh yeah and uh, even in a video game right like it's like another when we did the freddy video like it Mm -hmm. it it scared people to death like yeah jason itself friday the 13th like as a franchise was so scary back then you know what i mean so like any just that game coming out like in like you said that little beep knowing that it was jason bro like it scared you enough to make that game feel like it was fun you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, cause it yeah. was, cause he held so much like force. Yeah. Like Jason. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, I watched every Jason that every Friday the Thirteenth that ever came out. For sure. Just cause of him. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So I understand why you like that. Yeah, I love that game, and I'm just really happy that it exists. Yeah. All right, y'all. Who remembers the Ren and Stimpy show on Nickelodeon? Wild ass, disgusting, shocking. All of that shit. That show was insane. All right. It debuted on Nickelodeon on August 11th of 1991. 91. And it was on the air until October of 1996. That's a good run. It is a pretty good. That's a five-year run. For that kind of a show. For this type of a show, I can't believe it made it that long. The series follows the misadventures of Ren, an emotionally unstable, <laughs> psychopathic chihuahua, and Stimpy, a good-natured, dim-witted cat. Bro. I mean, dude, you want to talk about Ying to the Yang? Ren is a psychopath. I mean, this dude gets fired up over everything. Bro, who, and that's such a, like a true like uh, story. You know what I mean? Like, oh, my God. Chihuahuas are always crazy, and cats are always sort of cool. Sort of chill, yeah. yeah. Chihuahuas are insane. Like, who has this idea, bro? Chihuahuas have been downbred to be absolutely oh, yeah. batshit crazy. They don't like anybody. They don't like anything, but anybody, people. except for the one person where yeah. they sit in their lap and they just fucking <laughs> shake the whole time. Um, <laughs> but, like, who who's sitting in a board meeting with this idea? Like, come on, man. Well. What a good idea. Dude, I'm telling you, this shit 
was groundbreaking. The the animation, uh, the art direction, just everything about it was at a time when cartoons were. Let's be honest. They they were Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah, yeah. This hit another. Uh, they it they, went a different direction. They were cookie cutter cartoons. Yep. They were they were children's cartoons. And even though this was on Nickelodeon, I mean, I wouldn't even call this a children's cartoon if you go back and watch it. Mm-mm. It received widespread critical acclaim. It was a huge hit. Okay, for its visuals and its animation that have never been seen before. This shit was truly just next level of just showing you how it can be done a different way. Yeah. With the with the old tools. They were still like they were still using these old painting them and, and doing all this just old school techniques that that the creator had adapted to this new way of thinking. Um but it generated a ton of controversy for its dark humor, yep. its sexual innuendos it's adult humor, it's violence and shock value. And this shit was on Nickelodeon. And, and and this show was basically like a anti-censorship at the time. Because at the time in the early 90s, let's think about it. Uh, basically, art was at war with the government as far over censorship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were getting involved with, with bands like Two Live Crew and NWA trying to silence them. And they were doing the same exact thing especially with cartoons they they were trying to tone it down they were trying to get involved with what was on television anything that could influence the youth and you know I, th- what I mean I think it's pretty awesome that Nickelodeon kind of stood their ground and were like well you know we're gonna air this yeah you know um, but like you said earlier like th- this show and this animation basically changed the whole rest of the future of this business yeah it really did it, Ren and Stimpy and the creator John K, which by the way was an absolute dirt bag, but you know every <laughs> had to be look what he every creator of something amazing and iconic, most of the time and they end up being pieces of shit, and he was no exception. But that's he neither here nor there. The Ren and Stimpy show definitely inspired a ton of animation and and Adult cartoons, cartoons that came after. Yeah. You got to think the Cartoon Network. Yeah. Would it would it have would it have been around if it weren't for Ren and Stimpy? Maybe. Would there be a South Park? Would there be a South Park? SpongeBob draws a ton of inspiration from the Ren and Stimpy show. Go watch just watch one episode of the Ren and Stimpy show, and then go watch SpongeBob, and you'll be like, oh, shit makes sense now. Yep, they saw that they let people know that you could do it a different way, like you said. Super important show to the 90s this type of show th- this is another explanation of the 80s and the early 90s not giving a fuck when no. it came to art and just putting the wildest shit out there and the mo- some of the most inspirational shit yep. of all time and this type of shit right here is directly responsible for people like me and you in our generation's sense of humor. Sense of humor. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you don't really understand it or know it, but all of this stuff mixed, this has a huge impact it on does, for on, sure. on basically who I am. You know, I, big. it's a big deal to me. Yeah, no, it, I'm glad that that kind of show existed so we get what we get today. All right, y'all, let's talk about Kurt Russell in the 80s. Bro. Was he the biggest star in the 80s? I don't know. Could, I mean, could you look any cooler? I know. This man, he was, he's my dad. <laughs> Tuck has, <laughs> Tuck didn't have a dad, but he had a lot of dads. I have a lot of dads, and let me tell you why. Kurt Russell, Overboard. Yeah. I'm telling you, when I saw Overboard, I was like, that's my dad. I don't have dad. That's my dad Bro. right there. I loved everything about him. He had a bunch of little kids running around his little little dirty ass house, and I felt like I was one of them. Yeah. So yeah, I loved Overboard. It's such a fantastic movie. Dude, he had he he had a run in the eighties where oh my god, like you could do no wrong. Nah, you know what I mean? Nah, Big like, Trouble. Every yeah, Big you got my ass to go say it. Big Trouble in Little China is one of the most nostalgic movies of my life unreal movie like it seems like it's a video game it, it doesn't seem real yeah it seems like some kind of mythical uh video game of i'm watching like yeah it seems like it is real and if you want to personify the 80s in it's, a movie that's it 
you're going to be hard pressed to find one more nostalgic and more 80s than Big Trouble in Little China. You know what old Jack Burton always says. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean, that every the 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 bad guys in that movie, the just the, the fucking story, the the everything. Like the, God, the the way he looks, like he dude kicks ass all movie, <laughs> for and, real. and and he's fighting fucking Street Fighter two type characters. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Or fucking Mortal Kombat, mm -hmm. like Raiden and like what a movie, dude. Yeah, yeah. And there's some uh that movie came out pretty early too, and there's some uh. There's some special effects in that. No, it holds up. There's bro. like some, I some watch, CGI, early I, CGI in that. I could go watch that right now and have a good time. We should cover that one for uh -oh, sure. We got to. Um, Tango and Cash. I hell mean, yeah. Two cool ass dudes hell kicking yeah. ass. Tequila Sunrise. Tequila Sunrise. I mean, dude. And then, of course, you know, Goldie Hawn. I mean, dude, there. if you want to talk about a successful relationship, look no further. Yep. These people didn't even get married. I know. And they, just, still... they just looked at it like, Fuck y'all. Yeah, and we're still together. Yeah, they're together, and all the people got divorced. That's right. Yeah, like they didn't even do that. And I love how they did. They would do move. They do movies together. Yeah. You know, Overboard being one of them. Yeah. Like, um, and they're such just like such a cool like couple. And you know, Kurt Russell, he's been active since 1962, bro. Dude, he's dude. He was in fucking the Marvel movies recently. Like, he's still. Active. Still killing it. And I, I looked, I went and looked at um, his IMDb when, oh, when we God, had this. Oh, God, but that's fucking like and, longer and than like, our notes. I was like, I wonder when he started. And so I was thinking, well, he was huge in the 80s, so he probably started, you know, early, se I mean, no, dude. mid mid 70s or something. Bro, it just There's kept a, going. I'm pretty sure, you might not know this, but I is we have to look this up, but I'm pretty sure there's a scene where he kicks Elvis in the leg. That's how in a movie. I thought he played Elvis. He, I'm talking about he kicked the real oh. Elvis in the fucking leg in a movie. Oh my god! And that I'm talking about. Hey, he's been in movies since then. Damn. Like, I'm telling you, I have to look it up, but yeah. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Like he kicked the real fucking Elvis in a leg in a movie. No, nah, and then you know when I was looking at his IMDb. It shows that he played Elvis in 1979 in a movie, and it's just that got me thinking. Like, man, this fucking cycle that we do. Yeah. You know, we this they just made a new Elvis movie. What's even more crazy, like like I just told you, he kicked Elvis in the leg and yeah. then played him when he got older. Yeah. And then 30 years later, or 40 years later, whatever it is, we we turn around and make another one, yeah. and no one even knows about that one. I, I had mean, no idea that even existed. No. It's just that whole cycle is just crazy. I mean, Kurt Russell, dude. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad Kurt Russell's out there. And he's still, dude. The Christmas Chronicles, awesome, bro. My favorite Christmas movie. I nowadays. watch it every year now. Every single year, I watch it with my kids. We're watching the Christmas Chronicles one and two. If you could, you would have told me that fucking Jack Burton is gonna be Santa Claus mm -hmm. when I'm older. Yeah, get out of here. Uh, exactly. And Goldie Hawn's in it. Yep. <laughs> I love the shit. Like, though. come on, man. And then fucking Escape from New York. Like, he he was such a... Every movie he did, I mean, I bet he was just, like, printing money. Like, for sure. every call he got, hey, I got a script. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He oozed cool. He did, bro. That's right. You said that earlier. My my guy oozed cool, and he was my dad. Which is crazy. He still does. He still does. I want to be like that. He's 72 years old. Dude. I want to be like that I see I'm him 72. in interviews, and their kids are all actors. Mm -hmm. uh, Goldie Hawn and uh, Kurt Russell's kids. There's like three or four. Three of them are all actors, yep. and they're all cool. Like, what a great t role model family, for sure. Yeah, killing the game, killing the game. All right, y'all. Time to address something. Recently, we released our Super Retro Top 20 NES games of all time, and tons of people gave us shout outs for our list and said they loved our list. Yeah, it went over well. It went over very well. But we have some honorable mentions, some uh You can call these honorable mentions and what I did was I scanned through the comments and saw the most mentioned uh of games we left out of the, the top 20. So And if people don't know how we did it, like Tuck made a list, I made a list and we sort of tried to combine the list and yeah. some shit that he wrote didn't make it. Some yep. shit that I didn't make it. But like like a lot of these games, like uh, Baseball Stars, 
was like huge to me and like that was one of the huge ones people said on that list like yep. and uh i just we just like to say we're sorry guys. <laughs> like baseball stars is one of my favorite games and it definitely probably should have been on that list but you know what are you gonna do when two people make their own list yeah and you can blame me because you know will sent me his list i had mine i was filling out the list and i specifically remember leaving that one off on purpose because at the time, it, it just didn't hit for and me. And we had a lot of sports on there already. Yeah, there were sports. RBI Baseball made it. A lot of people said that we should have swapped baseball stars out with RBA Baseball. RBI Baseball. Yeah. That may be true. You're, yeah, uh, I could see if I uh, argue. I'll, I'll listen to that. But, you know, that, that was on me. I left it out because it didn't hold a lot of nostalgia for me. But, I, you know... I was playing it earlier today in preparation for this video, and I was like, "Damn, this is good." I was like, "This, this is pretty good. It probably should have made shit it." Out of that game. Because playability today was a big factor that yep. that helped us with our list, and that one definitely holds up still today. Um, but uh, another one that I that I um, saw mentioned a, a ton was Kid Icarus. Man, and you know uh, that's there's a solid argument for that, Kid Icarus. That there has, really is. When I think of that, I have uh, it's, it's got some good nostalgia vibes to me. It really does. To say Kid Icarus is not in the top twenty, you got to have some strong ones in mm -hmm. front of it, and it didn't make our list maybe because. Uh, I you know I didn't play it as much as I played the other ones, but yeah. it's definitely a solid ass game. A lot of these people don't realize that this list was because of the games me and Tuck played, not yep. necessarily the games we think are the best. Right, and you know some uh, shit just didn't pop up on our radar. It, it didn't it didn't hit for us. I'm sorry, just, which is perfect segue into this next one, Tetris. Yeah, I saw a ton of people mentioning Tetris. If you go back and play Tetris today, the playability of that game. I'm immediately over it as soon as I start. Yeah. I know I'm going to get destroyed over these comments about Tetris, but it just doesn't. Uh, it doesn't move the needle for me. No, it doesn't. It's not my my mind has no time for Tetris. Do I understand its impact or and, its success? Yes, and, and its place in, in the top NES games of all time. Do I understand why you like it? Hundred percent, we do. A absolutely, but for me, nah, not top I mean, twenty for we me. We have it right back here on uh, CIB. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to put it in my top twenty just nope. because you know it's a it's a huge success as far as sales and a lot of people liked it. And nah. like this next one has uh, same also one. same. Final Fantasy is still a huge franchise. Yeah, still. And, today. and I'd say that one was probably mentioned the most. Yep. And I mean, I played it like back then. I played I it when too. it was a oh, that kind of a game. It's just. I don't know. It didn't hit with me. RPG stuff at the time. I wasn't, for me, RPGs weren't as important. I needed more action. Yeah, to me, if that, that wasn't Zelda to me. When I played no. that, it didn't, Zelda got me. That right. didn't. Yeah. And I was, get Final Fantasy. I get it. It's awesome. It's still going today. Like, it's yeah. bigger now than it ever has been. Right. So, I get it. Yeah, but, but for us, it just didn't crack that top 20. We know a lot of people have it as their number one. Yeah. You know, that's fine. I understand. But for me, it's not. It's just a little too slow for me. You go back, try to play it today. Uh, I, I don't know. It just it, it just, it just, ain't hitting for me. Um, people mentioned bad dudes a couple times. I feel like you can't really beat them. Uh, as far as beat them up games, you got Double Dragon. You got River, River City. City Ransom. I don't see how bad dudes is in front of either one of them. Mm -mm. So, nah, it doesn't hit the top 20 for us. Is it a fun game? Yeah, I like the game, but yeah. it's not. Nah. No. And I, I get this one too. Ice hockey has a lot of nostalgia for me because I played it a lot. Yeah, I played the hell out of it. And it's a, you know, it's definitely top 10, top 20 sports games of all time. You know, we can. And I think we should might as well just hit Blades of Steel with it. Yeah, like, Ice Hockey and Blades of Steel. Blades of Steel and Ice Hockey were like those games where they, I, I played the shit out of both of them. Me too. Like I, me too. I liked both of them. Right. They were but, fun. But I still didn't like them enough to put them in the top 20. And I yeah. still don't. Like, yeah. I don't to even. me, they're still awesome games, and that's why we have them. Right. Let's be very clear here. These games we're mentioning, all of them are are awesome. Yeah, we and, still play them. And you know, there's there's seven hundred and like sixteen North American NES games released, something like that. So to be in the top fifty of all time is is yeah is awesome. And all these games would definitely, definitely make the top fifty, be. uh, for most of them anyway. Yeah. Um, Blaster Master. Man, we played that recently. We've been playing that game a lot. I feel yeah. like we go to that one a lot. We do play. now. Uh, 
Is it top 20? I, I'll listen to that argument. You I know? think I play it. I've played it more here recently than I did as a child. Yeah. Yeah. Same. So I get, and I get how cool it is now. Yeah. It's, it's cool as hell. Yeah. Um, I like it. So I'll listen to that argument. Me you know, too. if you want to throw Blaster Master in your top 20, absolutely. Don't skip Zelda 2. Oh, I did skip yeah. it. My bad. So Zelda 2. See, man, <laughs> when, I don't know. I think, I think whatever they tried to do in Zelda 2 threw me off mm -hmm. as a kid. Yeah. After I played Zelda 1 and just was entrenched mm -hmm. like with it for years. Yeah. Like, and then when that Zelda 2 came out, I was just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I, I get it. I play, I've seen it. I played it. I just, I don't know, man. It just didn't, it didn't like hit that same didn't vibe. Connect. No, it's the same as the first one did. So right. that's why I didn't even show up on either one of our lists. Yeah. You know, I, it, I have a lot of nostalgia for it. Me too. But for I, Zelda too. I I did like it. Me too. I, did I played like it. it. A lot of people, you know, it's often regarded as like a dark horse in the whole series. And like people won't even acknowledge it a lot of times. Kind of like some people get with Mario, Mario too. too. I liked it. Yeah. I liked I liked Zelda too. Um, I would put it in my top probably. 40 top yeah. 40 of I, all like time. we talked about earlier i think whatever they did in zelda 2 was uh they they got right with the, the one uh on snes yeah oh link, yeah. To yeah, link to the I past i think that's sure. what they wanted to do yeah uh wizards and warriors was <laughs> mentioned a ton classic game you know i'll listen to this argument too but i think i think a lot of people would add that into their top 20 based on nostalgia yeah because it's it has a ton of it i me and my sister played that game a lot. Yeah, it's a fun ass game, man. and it's pretty hard. It looks good too. No, it like does. the art in that game yeah. is really jumping cool. up in the trees. Yeah, the and, trees. I mean, God, dude. Uh, that's what I think. Falling, of those trees. Jesus. Yeah, um, pro wrestling. I mean, we played that. We play this. We play this game all the time. Yeah, that game to me, like, was the introduction of of how cool a wrestling game could be mm -hmm. to me. Star Man, yeah. Like, dude, Amazon, like all Star of them, dude. Man. Uh, but yeah, but I mean the characters, the moves. Everybody had their own like uh, classic signature move. We need that CIB. But yeah, 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 yeah. we do. I thought we did. No, we have, we have. Uh, Kung we Fu. do need that. Uh, but yeah, I mean Kung Fu. Yeah, how we not even say that? We didn't say That's Kung my Fu. game. Yeah, I mean, is it a classic? Yes, dude. Just like pro wrestling, pro wrestling is a is a classic. Any of those black box, the mm. first games like that, to me, all hold a special place in my heart. Right. No right. joke. But if we're talking the best. Yeah, you can't. Gotta, I mean, I love Kung Fu, and I still play it and still beat it every time I play it, and I love it, but I can't put it in my top 20. And this game right here, this next one, we left this one off, and it's, you know, if you if you look at any top 10, top 20 list online, this one's always there, DuckTales. Yep. DuckTales, man. And, you know, I did I play it a ton? Yes. I played DuckTales a lot, and I loved it. But when I was making the top 20 list, it just, you know, it, it didn't hit. I was writing it off to the side. Like, I'll add it in there. I'll add it in there. Everyone we have on our top 20 list, I like better than DuckTales. It's just so, people, you guys make your list. It's so hard. Yeah, really try to make one. Like, it's so hard to leave certain shit off and put certain stuff on that has a spot in your heart. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, you, you, yeah, you start struggling like, with like that. Like Battletoads. Like, it, so many people have that. That's one of theirs. Yep. You know what I mean? But, like, how can we. Put that on there or leave like a turtles out. I think people were putting battle toads on there based on the way it looks versus the actual gameplay because yeah, it's hard too to hard. It's hard. It's like that's like putting turtles one on there. Yeah, the, exactly. Like great game, but fuck it. Yeah, the, the difficulty <laughs> of battle toads keeps it off of my personal top 20 list yeah because also a game has to be fun like to beat it you know what i mean like you yeah. have to get deep in a game to really really love it right and if it's so hard you're like Ugh. so there are the games that we're left off of our top 20 we're list. left off of our top 20 list that you guys were not happy about. and i'm sure there's going to be now a whole new yeah. left off list that you're going to write in the comments yeah we're sorry sorry about bubble that. bobble somebody say that some somebody said bubble bobble yeah I saw a bunch of them, but uh, these were the ones that I saw mentioned time and time again, like yep. over and over and over. But again, it was just our list that we had the most fun as a kid playing. Yeah. It was our interpretation of the situation. Yeah. Here's something I want to talk about, Will, that's kind of off script here. Um, dude, on our top 20 list, we, we uploaded it to TikTok in two separate videos. And the top 10 list, 
so many people either love Mario 2 or hate Super Mario 2. It's not even. It's black and white. It's literally, you can't kind of like it. No. You either hate it or you thought it was awesome. Like, it's another one of those, they'll say it's trash. Or somebody will say it's their favorite Mario. Literally, go look at the comments. Yeah, it's wild. And and that's probably why our, our Super Mario 2 video was so successful. It probably is. It's polarizing. Yes. Super Mario 2, yes, is polarizing. And, so, and now, if you look, go watch our Super Mario 2 video, you'll know why. Mm-hmm. It's so polarizing. Right. Because it isn't even Mario. Exactly. Like, you know what I mean? That yeah. I get why people hate it. But it, it's such... It, it was needed. Right. Like, I don't understand if... I don't think you get that if that didn't come out... Yeah. Mario today isn't what it is. 100%. Like, and it, that, that little fuck up made it not what it... Like, the Mario 2 that was envisioned. The hard-ass boards, which... You know the what is it the lost levels? Mm-hmm. Like that's what Mario would have went towards. Yeah. is the first and second one. That's right, and that's that's what's annoying about the whole thing when people just are quick to hop on there and be like Mario Two's trash or Mario Two shouldn't even be on the list or take that out and put this yeah. in. You, you wouldn't know? have got Mario Three. Like, like did you really even play it or did you just play it for a few minutes and it didn't? Yeah. It wasn't exactly like Mario One, so you were just like, all right, whatever. What you actually had was an amazing game. Like look at Mario Three. And it's probably the best NES game that ever was. Mm-hmm. And like, according to our list, yeah, it was. you wouldn't have got it without Mario Two. They right. stole the shit from that and took it and took the shit from one. You yep. know what I mean? Like and yep. and the lost levels and put all three of them into one game called Mario Three. Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? Like you got that game because of that misstep. Yeah, that it, mistake of having a uh, Doki Doki Panic. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, thank God. I happened. know. And it's, you know, I feel like people are kind of shallow when it comes to, you know, they, people need to give it a chance uh, instead of, I bet I bet most of the people in our comments that are calling Mario Super Mario 2 trash. Haven't have, played it in a long time. Haven't actually really played it except for when they were the one time when they rented it or they got it as a kid and then they played it and it wasn't exactly, it wasn't the same as Mario 1. So yeah. I challenge form, you to go play it. As an adult, yeah. right now, give it, give it a couple of days. Go play it and see, see how cool that board, the boards are developed as. Like, yeah. go see how this game plays. Yeah, and you know they 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 formed an opinion based on you know, I don't know, it not being what they wanted. Yeah, yeah, being spoiled yeah. almost. Yeah, yeah. but uh, Mario Two is awesome. I love it. I don't care. Yeah, Super Mario Two. Has an awesome spot on our top ten list, and it deserves it. It deserves every single piece of it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's talk about this Legend of Zelda Easter egg on the NES. Apparently, if you enter Zelda in the name screen when you're entering your name, it takes you to the second quest. Because you, you know, after you beat Zelda the first time, it's not over. Like as soon as you beat it, they send you, and you get to do it again, and everything's changed. Not everything, but certain things that you learned on the first quest will all have changed, and it's a different experience. And it's harder. harder. All the dungeons are in different locations. Yes. Your heart containers that you get, they're in a different location. Shit's Basically, just... all this hard-ass shit you fucking took forever to learn is all just switched around. Yeah, forget everything you yeah. knew. Good luck again. And then when you beat that second quest, only then have you actually beaten The Legend of Zelda. Yeah. You have to beat it two times. So if you enter Zelda in the name screen, you skip that first quest and you go right into the second. So Which would be a really fucked up experience to do that first. Yeah, can you imagine being a child and just saying, what are you going to name yourself? Oh, I name myself Zelda. And then you enter it, and yeah. then you have to play that second quest, not even realizing. Bro, How many kids did this? That's what I told you. Like, when I was a kid, it, it, if you went to somebody's house, most likely the <laughs> name was Zelda or Link. Yeah. Like, that was... Because when I told you, like, when I was a kid, like, there was so long that I didn't have a clue who Link was. Oh, me either. Like, that dude was I was Zelda. playing with was fucking Zelda. I didn't Absolutely. know I was saving Zelda. Like, as you as, think, I, I it took me forever to beat it. So how the hell would I even know? Yeah, you know what I mean. Then I learned it like in a Nintendo Power. I was like, oh, yeah, wait shit. a minute, he's oh, not shit. Zelda. He, yeah, 
Yeah. That's a huge thing for kids in that. It, it's a kid thing because my kids still will call Link Zelda. Yeah, if you like Breath of the Wild, yeah. That you're playing Zelda. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> yeah, like no. it, yeah. your whole goal is to save Zelda. But, but yeah. How funny. But so yeah, there's a Zelda Easter egg for you. Give it a shot. Go try that now. All right, y'all. So that's the show. Thank y'all for tuning in. Thank yep. you wherever you're watching, listening, wherever you're following. If you're on our TikTok page, you're on our Instagram. Both of them are doing pretty well right now. Hell yeah, guys. We appreciate you. Keep sharing you. it. Keep, I mean, the, the followers, man, is just so crazy to me. I know. Like, I know. And uh, see, to see Instagram now picking up. We're thankful, y'all. Yeah, thank thankful. you guys for even listening to us babble about this nostalgia. Yep. And um, we have an email. Oh, I got to show you an email, Will. Um, cool. Super retro pod at gmail.com. Super retro pod at gmail.com. We're starting to get some crazy uh, stuff getting sent to us. Yeah, also. we got some mailbags yeah. on the way. Can't wait to do these mailbag segments. We got, we got an earnest painting coming. Oh, yeah. We got, can't, uh, can't wait we to got see Nintendo that. World Championship cartridges coming. Hell yeah. Like, this is some crazy stuff. I know. It's wild what's happening, y'all. And we, hey, we couldn't do it without y'all. No, so thank you for watching, spreading the word. Keep listening, and we'll keep talking about some crazy 80s and 90s retro nostalgic shit. For sure. I don't see us stopping anytime no. soon. We're just getting started. Um, follow all those pages, like we said. And until next time, y'all, peace. Yep.